The opinions expressed in the video you are about to see are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Welcome to Botest.com, Captain Rob Smith. I'm on the Seaway Offshore 24. This is a lobster boat design with a lot of modern features that are going to impress you. So if you'll join me on board, we're going to go through a few. Seaway is a semi-custom builder and this new boat has a classic down east design with plumb bow and hard chines for stability. You can get this in three designs, lobster boathouse, seafarer canvas top, and hard top that we're looking at today. This is a 100% hand laid hull. Seaway brings the main tradition to those looking for a great value at a price much lower than her competitors. One of the first points I'd like to make is this is a 100% composite construction. What we're looking at here is a core from the transom. This is what they call a Penske material. That's how thick the transom is and there's no wood. So if you did happen to get a leak in there, you're not going to tend to have the rotting that you may have with the transom made of wood. The second piece is the floor and many of the parts that I've, I will show you today are what they call infused. This is a core material that gets infused with resin under a high vacuum. Before long, the entire boat's going to be like that. Right now, the cabin top is a Nidacore cabin top. We'll talk about the value of that shortly. For the fishermen and you, my test model had the standard rod racks under the starboard gunnel and a dive ladder stowed under the port side. Across the back of the hardtop, this test boat also sported the optional rocket launcher rod holders. While you'll likely spend very little time up front, you will appreciate the center teak handrail and side safety rails when you go forward. In the pulpit, there's a standard roller and deck pipe for the line and chain. Going offshore, you want to be able to have some comfort if it gets to be a sudden shower or a hot sun like we have today. It's nice to have the hard top, so that's part of the hard top option on this. You can also add the uh, curtains. There are sail tracks here so you can put a canvas enclosure, including a roll-up door. Let's take a look at the stern of the boat and get a better understanding of how they're able to have such a large and versatile cockpit. The Armstrong bracket allows us to not have the engine well that you would have in the stern of the boat pushes, in this case, the 150 Honda back enough that you're able to capture that space. You can go up to a 175 on this particular model. Another advantage of not having the engine cut out well back there is you're able to have a full-size box in this case. This is an insulated box. You can leave it on board when you're out entertaining, or you can put it into the garage or carport when you're going out for a day of fishing. This one's got a good cushion as well as the teak backrest. Functionality and comfort are important in any boat today. In the aft end of the cockpit, we've got a working station here with a sink, single burner stove, and to make the storage even more useful, it's deep enough that if you choose to have a generator on board, it can fit back in the back there and still leave you plenty of room to store your extra gear. Let's take a few minutes here in the cockpit. Got an L-side lounger on the starboard side. Three or four adults can easily sit here and relax and enjoy the view. This seat's an upgrade from what I'm used to seeing in boats like this. It's more heavily cushioned. It's got an easy bolster to use so that with it up, you can lean back and use it as a leaning post design, or you can bring it down to relax and just kind of motor along. Here's a feature that your service people are going to like, or if you're handy and do things yourself, you'll like it. This whole system will tilt forward, and you can get to all the backside here and install all the electronics you want. When I first stepped up to the helm, I was a little concerned because this board runs right across my line of visibility at six feet. I talked to the people at Seaway and they said they're really encouraging you to use the captain's chair to either sit and relax or as a leaning post as I'm using it now, which totally opens up the visibility. Stepping into the cabin, the first thing I appreciated was the fact that they have a honeycombed cabin top in here. The value of that is, this boat's been in the water all day today. It's around two o'clock in the afternoon in the Florida sun, and it's not blooming hot in here like it usually is. Just inside the cabin of port is a standard manual toilet with privacy curtain. Also inside our test model, we had the optional refrigerator and microwave, nice conveniences for a long day trip. Forward is a V-berth you can stretch out and relax in. The hatch overhead allows a lot of light and a breeze when needed. The Seaway 24 Offshore for 2008 measures 24 feet length overall with a beam width of 8 feet 6 inches. She tips the scales at 3,700 pounds drive without the engine and is rated for up to 175 horsepower for outboard engines. She has two 37-gallon fuel tanks and a 15-gallon freshwater tank. 
I tested this model just outside Sea Line Marina in Miami during the Miami Boat Show with four people on board and running some rather nasty chop from everyone else getting a test ride on big boats. She handled it well with the 150 horsepower Honda 4-stroke and she performed better than I expected. She was on plane in 7 seconds although there really isn't much bow rise to note and up to 30 miles per hour in 16.3 seconds. I found her best cruise to be around 4500 RPM for 24.8 miles per hour and a range of 226 miles on a full tank of gas. She reached the top speed of 34.6 miles per hour at 6100 RPM. Seaway's an up and coming builder that I think you need to keep an eye on. They're doing a lot of things right. With this Seaway Offshore 24, you've got a lot of options on board, yet as tested today, we're at around $106,000.